If you've ever struggled with feelings of self-doubt and unworthiness, I've got some great news for you today. Hey, my name is Gabe Kolstad, and I'm here with you on the Midweek Motivation episode of the West Side Podcast to just give you some great news and help in this area of confidence of, you know, am I worthy? Am I enough? of just overcoming your self-doubt. These are all questions that plague us because life has some big challenges and we need to be able to step up to those challenges. But a lot of the times we don't feel like we have what it takes. And, you know, most of us do struggle with feelings of self-doubt and unworthiness. As as a matter of fact, Psychology Today says that 85% of adults and adolescents struggle with self-esteem, low self-esteem. And it leads to things like violent behavior, like uh, dropping out, like, uh, you know, missing the mark on your personal achievements and and really having a lower output in your life than you wanted. And we don't have to live that way. You know, 55% of men feel like other people don't like them. 56% of women feel like other people don't like them. I mean, that's no way to live, right? If you if you live like that constantly, you end up avoiding all of the things that that life is supposed to be bringing to you. And so, I want to talk about two common mistakes that we all make on a consistent basis when challenges rise up, or when things get, you know, maybe a little bit stressful, or you're facing something that feels like it's bigger than you are. Two common mistakes that we make. Before we do that, I got to tell you a little story about two dogs. When I was growing up, my parents raised uh, Sharpays. And Sharpays are those those Chinese Sharpays are those dogs that have all those wrinkles, you know, and that real pudgy face and and uh, squinty eyes. And they, 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 you know, they just have this, this fat nose and they're just, they're cute dogs. We had uh, a bunch of them at one time. Two in particular that I can remember. One was named Honey. And Honey was this very timid dog that was super sweet, but did not have the confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like you might have noticed that sometimes you can tell if a dog has confidence. Well, this one was sweet, but a total pushover. And so when she was with the other dog, she was always getting bullied, always getting picked on. She was like the bottom of the pecking order, the bottom of the totem pole. And, you know, I've always felt bad for Honey because when she was by herself, she was the most loving kind, sweet dog. She wanted to snuggle, you know, and and she was a joy to be around. When she was with the others, she was just constantly being backed into a corner by the others. Then there was the other kind of opposite end of that spectrum was named Ebony. Ebony was this overconfident female dog that just like thought she was the queen of the universe. And uh, so she would pick on Honey and all the other dogs and just kind of like she was in charge. And you know, the real difference between those two dogs is simply confidence. It's funny to think that even animals have a sense of self-esteem or confidence or a place in the world. Um, And you know, unlike their situation, it's not like you have to be superior over somebody else in order to find your place and do your best. But um, it does remind me of two characters from the Bible as well. Uh, Caleb was this gentleman who had reached the age of 80 and was still strong and still very confident. And he told he told Joshua, he said, give me that mountain. He said, I want the mountain. He goes, I know I'm 80, but I can go. I can take it. I can develop it. I can drive out the enemy. I can do everything that's needed for me to occupy that mountain. Then there was Moses. When God approached Moses and said, I want you to set my people free, he said, not me. How can I? I can't even speak. You know, he kind of cowered. And so there's that attitude in life of confidence that sometimes gives us this feeling of going like, give me that mountain, I'm going to take it. Or don't ask me, I can't help you. Which one are you? If you think about what life is throwing you right now, which what's your approach? Are you saying, give me that mountain? Or are you saying, don't ask me, I can't help you? Because whichever one you you choose really sets the path for your life. It, it impacts those who are around you. I mean, maybe you're a parent and you're wanting to really impact your kids and and give them the values that you want them to have and to lead them in the direction that you want them to go and kind of set them on a foundation. You care about their spiritual journey. You care about their well-being. It takes tremendous confidence to parent like that. And if you have the Caleb mindset that says, give me this mountain, I'm going to do this thing, you're probably going to do really well. If you have the Moses mindset that goes, don't ask me, I can't help you, you're probably going to be a pushover as a parent. 
which means you're not going to do a good job of raising your kids in the way that you know you want them to go and that even God wants them to go. Maybe you're starting up a business and you have these business relationships, you have customers that you're talking to, you got employees, and you got to figure out, am I going to be confident in this moment? Am I going to be a person who exudes this ability to move in a direction that I want to go, that I believe even God wants me to go? Um, maybe you're a student and you're in college or you're trying to you know, get through high school and you're facing all these obstacles and, and they're big, you know, these challenges, this class you have to take, this program you want to do, this career path you want to go toward. It's big, but it's not bigger than you or is it? That's the question. You know, it's about confidence versus calling. If you feel like your, your calling is too big for your confidence level, then, you know, you're going to cower down like Moses did. If you understand that your confidence can be as big or bigger than your calling, then you can rise up and say, give me that mountain. I want to do it. You know, if you're in a new marriage, I mean, there's a challenging situation. Maybe you've got in-laws you're trying to deal with and you've got, you know, this integration of two lives together you're trying to deal with and rhythms and routines and holidays and money and all this stuff that you're trying to figure out. If your confidence is low, you're likely to cower and not do well. If your confidence is high, you know, if you believe that you can do it and that that you can succeed, you're going to succeed. You know, maybe you're new in your faith journey and you're looking at the idea of becoming the kind of person you want to be, but you don't have a great track record. Uh, You know, if your confidence is low, then you're going to have a real struggle in moving forward. Well, I want to help you to fix this. There are really two common mistakes that we make, and it involves the two questions that we constantly ask ourselves. So let me give you the first one. It's about identity. A lot of times when it comes to like, who am I? That's the question we're asking is, who am I? Identity. We're really asking the wrong question. And I want to give you a scripture from the Bible that gives us a different perspective. In in the New Testament of the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, which was written by the Apostle Paul, he said, For we are God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has ordained beforehand. In other words, Paul is saying, we are God's poem. If you look at the Greek word behind what Paul said, which is the language that originally the New Testament of the Bible was written in Greek, he said, we are God's poem. Like, like that kind of masterpiece. Like God himself was, was writing a poem when he thought of you. And, he, and Paul says, we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that he has ordained in advance for us to do. God, you are so purposeful. You know, your life is not an accident. And sometimes we ask in a vacuum, in a world that seems full of chaos and disorder, we ask, who am I? And, and we feel like a pinball. We're just getting shot around all over the place and there's no purpose and no order. But God thinks differently of you. And sometimes we ask that question, who am I? What we could be asking instead is whose am I? Who do I belong to? What is my primary identity? You know, if you think to yourself, I am just a blob of flesh in this massive universe of random chaos then your confidence is going to be low. If you think to yourself, I am a poem written by the creator of the universe, a masterpiece. That's a totally different thing. Whose am I? You are God's child. You are God's masterpiece. Can you believe that for a second? Can you stop for a second and go, how did I get where I am? Could it be that instead of random chaos, it was actually the good hand, the loving hand of God that got me to where I am for a purpose, for a reason, that you are not an accident, that you are not a problem, that you are not a failure, but you are a loved child of God called a masterpiece. He loves you so much that he has allowed the things in your life that have happened, that he has given you the strengths he's given you, that he has put the dream in your heart that he's put in there, you know, he's, he's, he put you in the family that he put you in, and you might be like, oh, thanks a lot, God. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. You know, there's a reason you're in your neighborhood. There's a reason you're in your apartment complex. There's a reason you're working at your workplace. You are God's masterpiece created through Jesus Christ himself, the, the, the one who came and lived this sinless life, who 
paid for our shortcomings, our sins, by death on the cross, who was buried in a grave in Jerusalem and rose from the dead, witnessed by over 500 people. Historically accurate, Jesus Christ is alive today, and he says, I'm praying for you, I'm living for you, I'm waiting for you, I'm coming for you. You are not an accident. So it's not who am I, it's whose am I? Whose am I? I am God's masterpiece, and you are too. That changes our self-confidence because all of a sudden we, we can release this idea of accident and we can embrace this idea of purpose. Totally a different thing. Gives us so much more confidence. The second question that we often ask, which I think really is also a mistake in those pressure moments, you know, when your problems seem bigger than your confidence or your abilities, when when your, you know, your calling seems to outweigh your confidence, we ask this question, we say, um, how can I do it? You know, uh, the idea would be like, what do I have to give? You know, what power do I have? And the Bible asks a, a, a different question. It's, it's the question of capacity. Can I handle this? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, who strengthens me, through, through him who gives me strength. And so the idea is, no, I can, not on my own though. How do we have power? How do we have capacity? It is because God himself promises that those who trust in him are going to receive power. They're going to receive a new, not only identity, we just talked about that, but a new capacity, the ability to do things that are supernatural, that are beyond natural. That could be anything from forgiving somebody when you need to forgive them to having the self-control to do the right thing when you are drawn toward doing the wrong thing. When somebody's tempting you, when somebody's antagonizing you, when you know, you've, you're tempted to give up, but we remember that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and so, you know, that idea that God gives us, it, it, he even asks this question in Psalm 121. He says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I mean, can you imagine yourself facing a challenge, but not by yourself? You're standing there before that battle, before that wall, before that issue, but right behind you is the God of the universe, bigger than life, more powerful than you can imagine, more well-equipped than anything you could ever have conceived, and he's standing there to help you, and he's available. And so the idea would be, you know, not only uh, whose am I, that's the question to ask in those moments of, of testing or of overwhelm. The secondly is, where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. He's here with you. Do you ever think of yourself as that powerful person who's been empowered by God, who he's with, and so you can then face your challenge? You know, God, you're not bigger than your challenge, but if God is with you, then he's bigger than your challenge. And so in that sense, you are bigger than your challenge. You can overcome. You can have the confidence now, maybe you're a person who goes, I just want my life to matter. You know, I want to be somebody who who really does impact others. Who Maybe you've got somebody that you're reaching out to and you're trying to pull them toward a good life, pull them toward God and hope and help. You're trying to pull them maybe toward spirituality or Jesus. And you're thinking to yourself, well, who am I? And the question would be instead, no, 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 whose am I? And your second question is, how can I? And the question instead is, no, where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I love the idea that God gives us confidence. He actually calls us in Romans chapter 8 in the New Testament. He says we are more than conquerors. If you're a person who needs that kind of hope and help, I hope that you'll lean into God today and ask those two questions. Whose am I? And where does my help come from? I hope that you found this helpful today. And I want to just invite you to do two quick things. One is, would you subscribe and share? Because if you're finding this kind of encouragement important and helpful in your life, then pass it on. You know, don't hide it. Don't hoard it. Let's share the good news. And secondly is stop by a Westside service on a weekend, maybe this weekend. You can do that online at westsidecommunitychurch.com, or you can even stop by in person at our campus right here in the Portland, Oregon area. We would love 
to see you and I hope you have a great week.